In 2009, LA reportedly saved 290 million gallons of water in one year by filling one of their city's reservoirs with balls. The idea behind their experiment was that the thousands of balls deployed in the Ivanhoe Reservoir would significantly reduce evaporation. And they were clearly right. So between 2014 and 2015, they repeated this experiment on a much larger scale by pouring 96 million black balls into their largest reservoir, the Las Virginis. But what if I told you that these balls did more than just save the city millions of cubic meters of water in evaporation? Beyond being one of the most ingenious water-saving technologies of the 21st century, these 96 million black balls serve a much more important purpose as deterrence to the chemical formation of the carcinogenic chemical called bromate, they saved the city millions in the water filtration process and much more in potential healthcare costs by keeping away one of the scariest diseases. But how exactly are these tiny, black, spherical objects able to do that, and why does LA need to turn their reservoir into the world's biggest ball pit? Before diving in, we need to get our terminology right. For starters, these are actually called shade balls, and they're small plastic spheres made of high-density polyethylene. In other words, they're made of plastic, the same type as the one in your milk jugs. Their dark color also comes from a carbon black additive which protects the plastic from ultraviolet radiation that comes from the sun. With a four inch diameter, they're just slightly bigger than your average baseball and about the size of a hamster exercise ball. Contrary to how they look, they're also not hollow, but are partially filled with water to prevent them from being blown away by air. After all, the last thing you'd need on a really windy day is a thousand black balls blocking your windscreen. Thankfully, the water weighs them down so they don't fly away, but they're still able to float on the reservoir. For the team that oversees the reservoir's maintenance, this feature makes it a bit trickier to navigate the length of the dam without feeling like you're wading through knee-deep mud. You can probably imagine that with 96 million shade balls spread across 175 acres, it is hard to believe that there's 40 to 50 feet of water below the giant ball pit. But why is LA choosing to make their reservoirs look like a huge boba tea, and why are other cities following suit? To answer that question, we have to go back to the early 2000s, when LA's Department of Water and Power first got notified that their water had high levels of bromate. For context, bromate, BRO3-, is a carcinogenic substance, which means it can cause cancer at high levels when present in your drinking water. However, it doesn't just appear out of thin air. It is often the byproduct of bromide, Br-, a harmless ion present in water and ozone, O3. As a result, water treatment plants that use ozone have to monitor their bromate levels on a regular basis to ensure it doesn't exceed the 0.01 milligram per liter benchmark. Beyond that point, it becomes a major concern for safe consumption. Thus, the LADWP saw it as a major red flag when a local beverage company reported that they were seeing dangerous levels of bromate in their water, nearly three times as much. The interesting part was that the filtration plant supplying them with water had their bromate levels well below the benchmark, so it became apparent that somewhere along the pipeline, more bromate was getting in the water. Uninterested in drinking the Kool-Aid, the LADWP started an investigation into their water supply and realized that between the treatment plant and the beverage company was an open reservoir. Now stay with me. Ozone isn't just a chemical to purify water, it's a naturally occurring gas in our stratosphere and would certainly find its way into open water sitting in a reservoir exposed to sunlight. However, reservoirs are prone to algae growth, so treatment plants have to add chlorine to the water before passing it on to the final user. Unfortunately, the added chlorine also doubles as a catalyst for naturally occurring and otherwise harmless bromine to react with sunlight-produced ozone and create the deadly bromate. Knowing that, the LA Water Department had to find a way to stop the reaction. The first part of the equation was removing bromide, but that process would be too costly and complex and even create more of the unwanted byproduct. On the other hand, getting rid of chlorine would allow algae to grow freely in the city's water supply, creating another health hazard. As a result, the most logical solution was to block sunlight and stop the creation of ozone. However, that was easier said than done. 
One of the first solutions the water department considered was installing two floating covers over the reservoir's surface. Ideally, these would effectively block out the sun and, as a bonus, reduce evaporation rates. However, the estimates for such a project exceeded $300 million, and there were concerns that a giant cover would make access and maintenance more challenging. Another solution that seemed viable, in theory, was installing suspended shade cloth covers, or SSCCs, which were essentially giant tarps above the water. But while effective at reducing evaporation and blocking sunlight, these tarps would need significant structural support and involve a complex installation process that wasn't practical over large reservoirs. Other solutions, like a trampoline with PVC pipes or a chemical monolayer, also made it to the drawing board, but were ultimately kicked out because they were either too expensive long-term or created a bigger problem than the one they were trying to solve. Eventually, a retired LADWP biologist, Dr. Brian White, presented his idea to use shade balls. Using high-density polyethylene to cover the water had come up during the brainstorming session, but the team initially wanted to lay them end-to-end -end in cylindrical form, which would have been too heavy and cost way more than the department could cough up. In comparison, using a spherical shape would require significantly less funds and could still get the job done. Dr. White's solution was so simple it was bizarre and almost laughable. How could turning the city's reservoirs into ball pits be a practical option? To be fair, his idea wasn't completely original. Dr. White had gotten the idea from bird balls, a similar plastic sphere that floated on pools and lakes to prevent birds from perching on the water. Since these balls had to cover the face of the water to be effective, the retired biologist figured that if they were made of the right material, they could last long enough to solve the city's bromate problem. His theory paid off when the team put it to the test. In a controlled experiment, the engineers filled three kiddie pools with water. They left one under the sun to mimic the reservoir, covered one with a black tarp, and the other with the new and experimental shade balls. With the latter group being effective immediately in dropping bromate levels, the LADWP decided to test Dr. White's shade balls on a bigger scale. Starting in mid-2009, they deployed 400,000 balls into the Ivanhoe Reservoir, and they were able to replicate the same results, as sunlight could no longer reach the water surface and bromate levels dropped significantly. With their main objective achieved, saving 290 million gallons of water was a great side benefit. Fully convinced that shade balls were their best bet at solving the bromate problem while keeping spending to a minimum, LA made headlines around the world in 2015 when they decided to take things a step further. They went over 10 times over when they announced they were going to deploy 96 million shade balls into one of the biggest reservoirs in Los Angeles. Spanning over weeks and requiring the aid of hundreds of workers and $34.5 million in funding, LA's water department was able to cloak the reservoir in black. Reporters called it everything from brilliant to bizarre, but irrespective of whatever side of the fence you stood on, the data was undeniable. Bromate levels in the city's drinking water plummeted below the safe limits, and they saved hundreds of millions of gallons per year. But wait, shouldn't dumping millions of black-colored balls on top of water lead to more evaporation? I mean, we are talking about one of the most heat-absorbing colors. In theory, the black balls would absorb more sunlight, transferring it to the water below, which would heat it up and cause more heat loss. Think of it like putting a boiling ring in a jug of water. You're bound to get more steam and less water as things heat up. Knowing that, opting for white, which repels sunlight, should be the smartest way to go. In fact, any color should be better than black in theory, right? On the contrary, the carbon black pigment that gives the shade balls their color is what makes them so effective at reducing bromate levels while simultaneously cutting down evaporation. You see, because black is such an absorbent color, it prevents maximum sunlight from reaching the water below its surface. Since the balls are half filled with water, the top half that's air acts as an insulator preventing the heated top part from transferring heat and energy efficiently to the bottom part touching the water. As a result, cooler water means much less evaporation by about 80 to 90 percent. Besides being a better deterrent to sunlight, the black pigment serves another purpose. It also acts as a UV stabilizer, which extends the lifespan of the balls by protecting them from degradation by sunlight. For context, 
When the LA Water Department started looking into shade balls, their first pick was blue. However, the company manufacturing the balls admitted that their lifespan would barely be three years, and before the end of the year, they might change color. On the other hand, when using a carbon black pigment, the balls are more likely to retain their color possibly for years to come while keeping the plastic from degrading. That means they can remain stable for years despite harsh exposure to the elements. In other words, black shade balls were the most cost-effective long-term solution in comparison to other colors to subvert evaporation. This is especially important in California's dry climate, where open reservoirs lose millions of gallons of water to the sun each year. But there's more. Beyond curbing bromate production and saving water and evaporation, these high-density polyethylene spheres have yet another use. Remember how we talked about reservoirs being hotbeds for algae growth? This effect is fueled by UV light from the sun, which if left unchecked, can clog water treatment systems and make the final drinking water taste bad. Thus, treatment plants have to look to the most effective way to reduce algae growth, which is adding more chlorine to the water. As a result, excess algae growth makes the filtration process more expensive. Besides requiring more funds to keep the water clean, excess chlorine treatment can make the water unsightly. For instance, when the temperature peaks during extreme heat in the summers, algae growth booms, requiring more chlorine. This additional treatment can leave a green tint in the water, which although safe to drink can be unappealing at first glance. After all, who wants to chug green water in the middle of a heat wave? However, since shade balls are effective at blocking sunlight, they're also great at stopping algae growth in reservoirs. The mechanism is quite simple. The carbon black pigment of the shade balls stops sunlight from penetrating to the water below it. As a result, algae, like most plants, are unable to photosynthesize and create the food and energy they need to thrive. Thus, by effectively interrupting the photosynthesis process, shade balls essentially starve the algae and limit their ability to grow, even when summer is in full swing. In the long run, this process reduces the need for chemical treatments, potentially saving LA's water plants billions in the future. Considering all the benefits shade balls have to offer, it's no surprise that other countries are looking to this creative solution as well. For example, around the time LA launched their audacious plan to put 96 million shade balls in their biggest reservoir in 2015, Turkey started making plans to do the same. After suffering a six-year water shortage and with over a quarter of the country's water supply liable to evaporation in open reservoirs, the government knew they had to do something. They opted for gray-colored, hard plastic balls to partly fill the waters and reduce their significant evaporation rates. As a bonus, the plastic balls doubled as deterrents to wildlife from landing on the water and leaving animal droppings behind, thus reducing the risk of potential contamination. Facing similar problems, Spain also showed an interest in shade cover to mitigate water evaporation. To that end, they deployed small-scale shade balls in an experiment in a domestic water reservoir. Other countries in semi-arid and arid regions like Jordan and Morocco have also been documented using shade balls to reduce evaporation, enhance their dam storage capacity, and prevent algae growth. So I think it's safe to say that shade balls could become a globally recognized and implemented solution to save water and keep it safe. However, this innovative floating ball technology is not without its flaws. Some researchers argue that shade balls may use up more water than they save. After all, you have to fill them halfway with the very resource you're trying to save. That means if you want to employ them on a large scale, you inevitably need more water, which could knock on negative environmental impacts. In other words, this seemingly quick and cost-effective solution could have long-term and unpleasant consequences. For example, in producing the 96 million balls with a standard 5 millimeter thickness, LA had to use 2.9 million cubic meters of water. In comparison, by March 2017, 19 months after they were deployed, they had only saved 1.7 million cubic meters of water. Researchers believe it'll take these balls at least two and a half years to save the same amount of water they used, making them less effective during times of extreme drought. There's also the consideration that these shade balls are made of plastic, and massive deployment would essentially be putting tons of plastic into our drinking water. Currently, the LADWP uses food-safe, biodegradable materials to produce their shade balls, meaning if one were to pop, it wouldn't have any harmful effects to the water supply. 
However, the quality of these balls will inevitably differ from one region to the next, potentially harboring bacteria and microplastics that could cause nationwide health hazards if not carefully managed. But as you can see, LA's shade balls are a triple threat, saving the city millions of dollars lost through evaporated water and extra chlorination treatment to curb algae growth. Not to mention the health benefits of deterring bromate formation through the combination of naturally occurring bromide and sunlight-produced ozone. Do you know any other engineering wonders that are shaking things up like LA's shade balls? Feel free to share in the comments section. If you thoroughly enjoyed this, please do well to subscribe to the channel for more content like this, and don't forget to hit the like button.